Hello my dear friends, I'm Zarina. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be sharing with you a book that can help you get the life you truly want. So let's dive in. The book is called Living Forward by Daniel Harkavy and Michael Hyatt. And basically it's all about how to live your life intentionally, incrementally. What I like about this book is that it actually walks you through step by step how to go from a life they call it the drift to a life where you're feeling empowered and you actually have a plan to get from where you are now to where you will be. And what's cool is that the plan isn't about making these big drastic changes, but it's just about these little things that we can change every day. And the idea is that it'll eventually avalanche and turn into this thing where you're finally having so much momentum that you're, you're getting towards wherever your end goal is. A lot of the book, based, the bulk of it is about creating your life plan. It sounds really intense, but really it's about living momentum mori, living, knowing, and thinking about your death. It sounds kind of morbid, but it's really great in that, or well, at least what I found is that when I'm thinking about dying, <laughs> so morbid, but it makes me think about, okay, how am I living now? So that if I die right now at the second, I would feel like, yes, I lived a life well lived. I lived according to my values. I lived according to my priorities because especially as we're working, you know, as, as an entrepreneur, it's so easy to just get lost in the thick of things and just get lost in the day to day and just go through the motions. But having that life plan, it just really helps me figure out where does work fit into everything. Um, because it's so easy for us to just keep working and working and working and working and working and then wake up one day feeling like oh great my work life is awesome but what about all the other areas in my life that i actually value have i you know cultivated that area and have i done what i needed to do so that if i died right now this second i'd feel like yes you know i was there for my family yes i was there and did the hobbies that lit me up i i did the things that made my life meaningful and I was a present to the people around me. So one of my favorite exercises from the book is they get you to create your eulogy. And what's cool is that you know how most of the time people think about eulogies like, okay, where will you be 80 years from now? But this one is more so like, what if you were to create a eulogy today? Like, who would be there? Who would you want in the front row seat? Who, what do you want them to say about you? And not just like, oh, Zarina was this amazing person, but what are the memories that you want them to share? So it's things that are more concrete. And what's cool about the eulogy is that it allows me to say yes to my calling. It allows me to say no to the things that other people want for me as well intentioned as they are. Um, but if it doesn't make sense for who I am, it gave me the courage to say, no, that sounds great, but I know there is something better for me. Because in the exercise of the eulogy, in this figuring out who are the people who you want to be there, it helps us realize like who are actually the ones who we want to leave a legacy for. It helps us realize like what are the things that we actually value when we think about what are the memories that they want to share about us when we think about what are the impressions we want to leave behind it helps us focus in on what are our priorities like you know how sometimes people create new year's resolutions and i know for years i had run a marathon in my new year's resolution it was just there because I thought I had to do it because, you know, apparently like health and running a marathon is like one of the bucket lists that you should do in your life. But running a marathon, as great as that is, it doesn't actually add value to my health account because what I want a healthy lifestyle to look like doesn't really include running a marathon, it includes doing parkour, but not a marathon. And so creating this eulogy just allowed me to figure out what my priorities are and what the reality of those priorities looked like, like what actually I want it to look like and give myself permission to say yes to that. Another thing that I liked about Living Forward is that it guides you through creating an action plan. So instead of getting stuck in what our current reality is and, you know, if it's too far away from our ideal reality, the action plan allows us to create to do objective steps and the book guides us through creating an action plan. So an action plan basically has in your life account. So 
So some one of the priorities that you identified mattered to you in your eulogy. And then you go through a purpose statement. So if you were to assign this life account to someone, what do you want them to get out of it? What What is their role? What is their responsibility? What is the purpose of this life account? And then the next part is your envisioned future. So what does it look like concretely? You're using your five senses. Like what does it look like? What is the smells that come from it? What is the like what are the sounds so if your envisioned future is you know i am going on monthly beach dates with my husband right like like you're you're doing that concretely you're sharing what that looks like concretely um, and then the envisioned future is, is written in present tense so it, it it brings you to that moment every time you read it and then this one's a more optional is the inspiring quote so for myself like i have it rooted in scripture but for others, you know, like they would quote Nelson Mandela, um, people who they they look up to. And then it goes into your current reality just so um, we are, you know, real with ourselves. Like what is it actually looking at, at right now? And what's different about the life plan is instead of creating these like big goals, these quote unquote smart goals, it just asks you to create specific commitments. So what are little things that you can do, baby steps that you can do right now to get you closer to that vision future that you have for yourself? So Living Forward actually guides you on how to do this retreat for yourself so that you can finish this life plan within a day, very short document, um, so that it's something that you can actually read like every single day just to ground you into, you know, what is the actual life that you're wanting to live. The next week, I'll actually be showing you how I've integrated my life plan into my quarterly planning as a business owner, and maybe you can get some ideas from there. I would recommend living forward to type A's. Anyone who likes structure, anyone who likes to, you know, think about their future and live it intentionally, highly recommend it. It helps you be more streamlined so you're not, you know, like, <laughs> I'm... I like plans, so I spent so much time on Google trying to figure out, okay, how do I piecemeal this? So it's nice to just have a book that just guides you through everything and helps you forgive yourself if you feel like you've drifted off track. But more importantly, take accountability for where your future is going to be headed. So if you want to find out more, I've linked the book below. Um, and I highly recommend it actually to get it from the book publisher's website because if you do it that way, they give you a lot of bonus content. You get to see different life plans from different people, um, from moms, from, from students, from business owners, so from all walks of life. If you want to hear more book recommendations like this, hit the like button below. In the meantime, I would love to hear in the comments below what book, fiction, nonfiction, have you been enjoying lately? Alright, that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!